Hello everyone, welcome to Banter Blintz for this May 2018. I'm your host, David Smerden, coming to you from Australia in the morning. I'm running a little bit late this morning because I just got back from from the doctors. I will explain all. Don't worry, it's not very personal. Um, as we get going today, looking forward to it. it. Should be good. So it's bright and sunny morning here in Australia. Good time for some chess. A little bit late in Europe. Good time to play uh, over in uh, the states at the moment. So uh, we're almost underway. Got a bit of a sore arm because I had vaccinations. That's why I went to the doctors. There was a big queue. It was running a bit slow today. Um, I went there about two hours ago. But uh, the plan is for me to go to Africa in a couple of weeks. Should be going to Kenya, uh, mainly to Nairobi and possibly also to Malawi. So I got to get all sorts of shots. Got a whole bunch in this arm, a whole bunch in this arm. And now I have sore arms before playing Blitz. <laughs> so we'll see how we go. Hopefully I don't have to move too fast. See how we go for the first one here uh, against uh, Plix a thousand from the states. Good way to start. I'll start with the old D4. Uh, what about a London system? I think a London system is a good opening choice. Right uh, when you when you're still warming up, if you're feeling a bit sleepy or a bit vaccinated, just to get things moving. It's become very very popular these days, largely thanks to work by. Uh, Kramnik and also Magnus Carlsen has played it quite a few times. Uh, Nidic as well, Arkady Nidic, formerly top German player, now playing in the Azeri team. There's a lot of top players who've played it. There's also the Jobova, um, Jobova London system. So that's Badur Jobova, the fantastically mercurial Georgian player. He plays a very strange one where he plays with the knight on c3, queen on d2, and then doesn't put the knight on f3, but goes for this quick f3, g4, h4, h5, just plays like you'd see in an under-10s competition. But he seems to do all right out of it. Um, but I'm playing it in more the traditional style at the moment, as you can see. Um, big choice around this point is typically whether or not to play c4 or c3. Um, that sort of sort of sets the tone for the game. So I've gone with C3. Typically that means I'm looking for an E4 break. If I had gone for C4, then I'd be looking to try and play by demolishing in the center as quickly as possible. There's slightly different uh, ways to play this position. So now the big question is, is it already time for 95? I think yes. I think I'll try to play it in a stonewall type uh, fashion. We'll see how that works out for me. Got him thinking, which is good. Mm hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Yes, that makes sense. I'm gonna I'm gonna play it in the really. This is sort of the. This is the old way to play this, which was just to sort of hold d4 down and then send everything towards the king side. Kind of really one track type uh, mindset. Here, bring everything to the king side and attack. Typically, this is not the way it's done anymore. People play this in a little bit more of a sophisticated fashion, um, playing positionally. Play a4, for example. Try and play on the queen side and the king side. A holistic approach to modern chess. But uh, ah, I'm feeling like just hacking through at the moment. Yeah. So we're just, so this is the first game. So technically, I'm still actually in my observation period after my last injection. They say that you should be observed in case you have a bad reaction or something goes wrong. I figure, what better observation could there be than banter blitz? I've got all you people watching me. You can tell me if something goes horrendously wrong or not. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'll get rid of that knight and put the bishop on e5. So I'm immediately threatening just to snap on f6. Um, and take on h7. So probably this is the call now for the move g6 to be played. And there we go. And now it's very tempting now to play the move queen h6. I actually won't do it. I'll play f4. 
I mean, it's really like no prizes for guessing what I'm trying to do here. F4 is kind of, actually, it's a bit risky because my bishop on e5 is kind of trapped. Um, gave my opponent the opportunity to uh, to play a move like knight e8 or something like that, threatening just to um, play f6 and trap that guy. But my opponent didn't go for it. And now I have a bit of a choice. There's this is the idea of playing knight f3 to g5, which is super tempting. I think I actually... I will do that. Yeah, I'll do that one. Kind of want to put the knight on g5. I expect he'll probably play knight e4. That seems like the most natural move for him. Yeah, I'm expecting knight to e4. And then I'll take it off and play knight to g5. And uh, the attack should roll on. It's very hard for black. If, if you don't really know what you're doing in these positions... It's very hard for black to find good counterplay. So he's gone for something else here. He's gone for bishop back. I don't, I'm not sure about that move. Seems to me like I'm getting pretty close to crashing through now. What's he going to do? Maybe h6? Maybe he plays h6. Maybe I shouldn't get too excited just yet. h6 looks all right, actually. h5. Well, I didn't expect it. Could be quite a good move, actually. Put the knight on g4. Yeah. I shouldn't be too dismissive of that. It does seem to me that taking on f6 and g4 might be close to winning now. But I won't do it. I'll play rook f3 because i got one plan in my mind and I'm going to stick to it. Knight g4 is probably going to be played. There we go. I don't have any nice queen sacrifices, unfortunately, but I will play rook to g3. Now what? Maybe f5? Maybe he'll try f5. We'll have to see. F5 looks like the obvious move. F6. Didn't expect that. I thought that would be losing. Is it not losing? Feels super risky. Got a couple of moves here that are very tempting. I think I'll take on G6 with the bishop. I think it's falling apart now. Because I'm going to take now an h5, threatening queen h7, mate, and queen h8, mate. Mm, stops one, but not the other. So there we go. We've started off with a win. The uh, recently returned from uh, medical practice, Smurden, hooks up the first win of the day. Don't give me much of a break, huh? Shadow Storm. Also from the States. Whoa, that's quick. Pre-moved E3. <laughs> Didn't see that coming. All right. Oh, he's pre-moved F4. Oh, rock and roll. Um, Righto. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that, actually. Maybe Bishop G4. He wants a stone wall. He really wants the stone wall. You can see that. But I'm going to try and... Bust open the stone wall as quickly as possible because stone wall is is very similar in a way to the London system. Basically, you try to get your system play the first fifteen moves on autopilot, essentially. Um, and the best way to annoy those sort of players is basically what I've what I've tried to do here: um, get them out of their routine as quickly as possible. So that's what I've tried. Seems to have worked. So far, so good. Big question here is whether I play knight d7, which is probably the best move, or something like knight e4, which is almost certainly not the best move. But that's what I'm going to play. Yeah, knight d7 taking on e5 would have left me with a nice small advantage. But I'm kind of just an attempt to play this sort of way 
just to see what my opponent's going to do about it. Now, he's played knight to c3. That's a little bit risky again. Probably not too bad. I'm really tempted for an exchange sacrifice here. I know it's really tough sometimes because I know these moves are not the best moves, but it's just, it's very, very tempting. Very, very tempting indeed. I think I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. Just just to see what happens. It's, uh, well, you can already guess. It's just, it's not right, but it's very tempting just because those pawns are so weak. So I'm the exchange down now. Let's see whether or not I was just way too cocky or whether I can pull something out of the hat here. Um, already I'm starting to have a few small doubts. And the whole point behind this was that I thought that I could maintain that knight on c4. Now I'm actually, actually not so sure anymore that I can, and that's a little bit concerning. So if I can't hold that knight there, then this whole thing sort of falls apart. Um, my opponent has these super weak pawns, so that's good news for me. It's very easy for me to get my pieces out at the moment, which is nice. Um, and that bishop on c1 just looks so out of place. So that's the that's the good news. Bad news is I'm not sure precisely how I'm supposed to follow this up. Maybe a move like uh, I don't know a5. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. I'm running very low on time. I need to think this through a bit. Maybe play a move like, uh, oh, I don't know, bishop g6. What have I got? One minute and five seconds. Really need to have thought this through a bit more. Anyway, position's kind of nice, though. I'm controlling things, which is good. Everything seems to be controlled. It's gone back there. I'm not sure about that move. It does give me one pawn for free. Really worried about my clock here. One pawn will certainly help the equation slightly. Ooh, well that's a bit risky as well. My opponent playing with some bravado at the moment. I'm down to under a minute, so I really need to be careful. Okay, he's gone there. Well, he's just offering me another pawn. Yeah, you know, well, I will actually... He's offering me more than another pawn. Dave, wake up. Come on, wake up. I should have been able to see that one. That was rather obvious. I can't believe how long it took me to see a free piece. It's not a good sign. Blame the bunch of injections I guess oh that's a good move by my opponent I actually didn't see that damn it that's a good move now now things get interesting oh come on should have been able to see that there was an easy way out Ugh, it's not going as planned all right so I've got the two pieces I should have been able to see this move 94 a little bit faster than I did but you know nothing lost just yet so now I've got the two pieces for the rook it should be plenty. So the exchange stack has worked. And now, fortunately for me, I will even be able to transform that into having an extra piece. So that's good news. And now, even though I'm down to 37 seconds, I can still feel quietly confident about my future. I don't think anything too bad is going to happen to me now. I'll just, uh, actually I might be able to get a sneaky little checkmate here. Let's see if he goes in. Ah, oh, it's a shame. King d5, king d7 would have been nice. Didn't happen, so be it. But we'll get those pawns going anyway. 
yeah, that's a good time. Let's call it. Thanks for the game. That's a good one. I, I'm a little bit uh, grumpy at myself. Maybe I'm just getting grumpy because I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit, uh, I don't know, vaccinated. Can you use that as an adjective? I guess so. The moving Dutchman. Oh, I got a little Dutch flag up there. I've got a soft spot for the Dutch. As many of you know, I spent well over five years of my life living in Amsterdam quite recently. So that's good. Let's see, it's quite late for the Dutchman. Um, he's played something a bit strange. I mean, I also played something a bit strange. Knight f3, knight f6, knight c3 is just not a real opening, of course, but thought, hey, why not? Um, now, what am I going to do? This is a... We have a weird opening already. Very weird opening. I kind of don't know how to handle this. It's very odd. He's going to play e6 for sure. And now... Yeah, I don't know what to do. I, I have no idea what sort of position this is. I guess... What is going on here? It's very weird. Typically speaking, that move knight c6 shouldn't be a good one because uh, this pawn structure with the d pawns... Oh, hurts when I <laughs> move the arm. Let's not do that again. Um, yeah, pawn structure is not considered the greatest. Um, you can see... It's a bit tricky to get the queen out now. Uh, what am I going to do now? Maybe rook h3. I think I'm just going to sit my king on f1. Uh, again, this is very similar to the first game where playing with white, I just sort of just went for it, just launched everything down the board. It's kind of the way that I like to play. Um, often when I'm not feeling 100%. If you're not feeling 100% when you're playing a game, you don't want to get into a situation where you feel like you're training, like you're solving complex puzzles on every move because the brain's not working well. What you want to do is get yourself into positions that you know well, that you feel quite comfortable in. Um, try to get on all autopilot pretty much if you can. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do now. Um, go into autopilot mode, get one plan. Not this sort of idea of mixing between different plans, which is, you know, what you're supposed to do at more sophisticated levels, but really just get your one plan, stick to it, um, hope for the best. It sounds a bit strange. I'm not sure that all, all top players would give you that advice, but it seems to work, uh, work for me anyway, so... It just helps me to get moving. Of course, at some points you do have to adjust your play if something strange happens, and of course, but uh, it does help you to keep keep focused and feel like you're moving forward. So here, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to throw this uh, rookie three check in. It's not actually a big deal for my opponent. Like he's going to have to move the king, but to be honest, it's not a big problem for him. So I don't want to rave too much about that. I'm going to get my king safe now. I'm leaving two pawns on freeze, but it doesn't really concern me too much. Um, so I'm going to play this move, rook f3 anyway. Maybe throw in a bishop f5 check. I've got a... Ooh, that's a little bit loose. It's a little bit loose. Might be okay, actually. Just plays rook e7 now. Didn't expect it. Took me by surprise, but um, should be okay. You have to say my opponent's position is totally fine. And actually, I should start being a little bit careful here because my queen is... Uh, she's a bit misplaced. My king's a bit misplaced as well, actually. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not super happy with this position. I'm going to play c4... The idea is that I need to try and open the center as quickly as possible. So that's going to happen now. And try to get my king safe and try to flick through a d5 move if I can. 
Rook d8. Mm, interesting. I don't know. Yeah. Can I play e5 now? It's tempting to play d5 now. I will play d5 now, actually. I'm down on time. My opponent's playing very fast today. Very well, as well. Yeah. All right. I'll take that guy off. <laughs> My opponent now... I don't know what's going on, but I've got some opportunities all of a sudden, which I didn't really have before, so this is good from my perspective. Throw that check in. Probably he can just play king d7. Oh, he hasn't gone king d7. He's playing really risky chess, but I guess it's all okay. Um... I think he's fine, actually. Yeah, looks fine. This position looks like it's absolutely nothing for me. I'm going to keep the pieces on because I guess technically I should be the one trying to play for a win. Um, hard to believe that I have anything here at all. But, you know, I am the stronger player, so I'm going to push... Push, 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 and see what I can get out of this. But I think everyone here knows that I'm really just hoping now this position has fallen apart. I didn't like the way my opponent played at all, to be honest. And yet, uh, he's got himself into a very respectable position. And I'm, I'm not at all hopeful about this. He's playing very well, very sensible chess. I, yeah, I, I can't see how I'm going to win this at all. In fact, more than likely I'm going to lose it. Oh, that was a horrible move I just played there. That was really terrible. <laughs> wow, this is, uh, uh, this is a horrible game. I'm really not happy with the way that I've played this. I'm definitely worse. How much worse remains to be seen. But it feels like I'm extremely close to being just lost here. I feel lost. Yeah, it feels, feels very lost. I always get the feeling my opponent might be happy to take a draw here. I don't want to draw. What's going on? Why did he do that move? It's a bit of a strange one there. Didn't expect that from my opponent. Didn't expect that either. What's going on? Sort of, somehow he's given me a pawn. I'm not quite sure... Must have been some miscalculation or something, but suddenly the game has really turned on its head. From me being lost to having an extra pawn. I mean, I just like playing chess, so I like I like playing on, even in positions that are, uh, you know, uh, that are objectively drawn or even lost. I just like I just like playing really. So uh, so I'm quite happy always to keep moving the pieces, but still, this one feels like I've gotten extraordinarily lucky I think I might try actually to get some pieces off the board my opponent's main problem here really is just that his king is so far away from where it needs to be it's so far away that he can take that pawn but I'm not sure that he's going to be able to hold on we'll find out oh, I don't know maybe he can I'm not sure I've got a little cunning trick here. Uh, oh, what's happened? Oh, I've won on time. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. Because it was going to be a close finish there. B5, king takes B5, rook takes A3. And I was going to play rook C6 followed by rook A6. I think the rook endgame is winning, but not entirely sure. So I really did uh, scrape through there. Wow, that was a close one. Unbelievable. Thanks for the game, Flying Dutchman. That was good. Whoa, okay, so three warm-ups that have kind of been a bit hit or miss, to be perfectly honest. 
but that's put me in the right moment to play Ears, who I must have played. I don't know how many games Ears and I have played. At least a dozen now, I'm sure. And they're always good fun. So back on board after a really close game against the Dutchman. Ears, what's going on? Where are you? Took his sweet time there. Ears and I, I'm trying to remember. I think the last time we played, we actually had a King's Indian. Oh, yeah. So what's going on? What's going on here? I kind of, I, I feel that I've almost got ears sort of, you know, sussed out a bit these days. Like we've played quite a lot. And once you've played a player a few times, obviously we've never, we've never met, but uh, I get the feeling that I, I know the way that he, he operates a bit, if I can put it like that. So that gives me a bit of an advantage in these positions. So I'm going to transpose into this moroxibine type structure, which I'm not sure is his is cup of tea. We'll find out. You can see he's played a clever move there, queen d2, usually with the idea of quickly being able to fianchetto that bishop on b2. But typically, white has an extra move in these positions because well, extra, not an extra move, but black's played d6 already. So white's been able to get b3 in a bit early. Here you can see I'm delaying the move d6 particularly to piss ears off, basically, because he wants to play b3, but he can't quite make it work yet. That's a bit annoying for him. He still should be able to get it in at some point. Maybe just not immediately. Oh, that's a good move, actually. No, I like that one. From ears. Yeah, that's quite good. Puts me in a bit of a quandary. Um, yeah. Well, what now? No, that's a very good move. I think I will take off that knight. And then what? What now? See whether he wants to do the queen trade. It's a strange endgame. Ears has just basically given up on developing the kingside pieces. Now... I wanted to play this move knight before, but it's really, it's a bit risky. But I'm going to try it, you know, against ears, I think that I should play principal chess. And I should also show him a bit of respect. Yeah, so knight, knight b4, is a, it's a bit tricky. You can see that even though white's neglected his kingside development, at the same time, I'm also not castled. My bishop on c8 is a long way from getting into the position. That is the wrong move, though, I think, by ears. I think that was a mistake, a mistake. I think he had to play something a little bit odd there, maybe a king, uh, king b1 or something like this, because now, well, now that king is going to get hunted a bit. I mean, I can take that rook, but I'm kind of in the mood for a little bit of a hunt. <laughs> you know, I really want to play <laughs> this move. H5. Is it any good? I'm not sure, but I'm going to do it. Let's play H5 and see what happens now. It's a very tempting move to play. He's gone for H4. That does sort of stop a little bit of the funny business. So, all right, fine. I'll take that rook off. Yeah, unfortunately for ears, it's sort of it's fallen apart now because I'm going to pick up... Well, I've picked up the rook. Maybe, maybe nothing more than the rook, but still things are starting to slip a little bit. Now... I was hoping that I could get some sort of sneaky checkmate here, but I can't seem to make it work. So I'll just take off that bishop. Unfortunately, 
I'm going to have to play slightly boring, or maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I think I have a checkmate now. Yeah, this looks like I should be able to sneak in the checkmate. Poor Ears, you know, if Ears gets going in a game against me, we have good games. We really do. But the problem is just a little bit of opening theory. A little bit of opening theory would go a long way is my, my uh, well, advice, my virtual advice from afar because I, I feel kind of bad. Often I get these winning positions without it being any of Ears' fault at all, just a little bit of extra theory. And actually, you know, that's one of the big advantages that Grandmasters have, particularly in modern-day chess. We have this this memory of work that we've done in our spare time while you've been uh, off at work and taking care of family. We've just been ignoring all that and going through lines and lines and lines. And even at the very top level, we often see particularly players like Maxim Vasha, Vasha Lagrav, and also Aronian. These are two in particular. And Mamadiarov is another one, Shakir Mamadiarov. You will see these players with... They, they will never, ever be thinking in their first, uh, whatever, 10 moves or something like this. Never, ever, ever. You know, they are always uh, ahead on the clock. And that's sometimes, reasonably often for some of the players, they can actually win the game without thinking of a single move themselves from that game, which is quite incredible. I mean, they do the work beforehand, and they're obviously strong players. Um, I'm nowhere near that level, of course, but uh, I'm just trying to say that in this case against Ears, I was able to get a winning position essentially without having to do any thinking by myself. And I've been on the other end of that a lot more, the uh, the Ears end of that, shall we say, and it's a pretty horrible feeling. So I feel, I feel your pain there, Ears. I really do. Thanks for the game. He says, I'm not rusty, I'm moldy. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> okay, Maika, Maika from Germany. Is that how I pronounce it? I'm going to assume yes, Maika. Um, Maika from Germany has played in somewhat unorthodox fashion because normally speaking, if you want to play this sort of London-type structure for black as well with the bishop on f5, and we end up in these positions where the queens get swapped off and one of the sides takes back with the A-pawn. So here I've played the thematic move, 6c5, queen takes b3, a takes b3. And then the battle really becomes around whether or not white can get in the move b5. Here, I got in the move b5 um, really quite quickly, actually. And now... That's sort of it puts a lot of pressure on uh, on Black's position. I mean, with the, I mean, I've got a lot of space on the queen side. I've got the open A file. I'm very quickly going to bring the rest of my pieces over there. It's not looking great for my opponent. I have this strong bishop on F4. A bishop on F4 is in the game because the b8 square is important, whereas the bishop on f5 is not really in the game. Uh, that's a good move, actually, knight to h5. That's a good move. Um, in fact, I probably should have played h3 the move before, um, because that's you know, slightly annoying for me. Still... Yeah, that's a bit... That was a bit stupid. That was a bit stupid. I take full responsibility for that. Uh, what am I going to do? That was good. Yeah. Oh, well, so be it. King d2. I should have played h3. I didn't want to lose that bishop because I was just telling you 20 seconds ago that really the focus was being able to use that bishop to hit b8. Now I've gone and done this, so that's a bit of a blow. On the other hand, it's not the end of the world. I still have nice pieces, good control over the center. The c6 pawn is weak. Um... 
So I shouldn't really complain about this too much. I'm going to just play the move F3 here just to stop any knight E4 type things. When you've got an advantage in space, which I still have, thankfully, uh, it's nice not to keep to keep pieces on the board, not to swap them off too much. So that's what I'm I'm trying to do here: keep pieces on for as long as possible. I'll flip in the move G4. Doesn't do too much at this stage, but. <clears throat> Can't hurt. Now, what about playing? Yeah, I'll play the move B4. Again, I'm trying to go on autopilot for as long as I can. Controlling both sides of the board. I'm much happier now than I was a couple of minutes ago. I'm kind of thinking now of taking on C6 and playing the move bishop to A6, or maybe taking on C6 and playing b5 for the second time in this game. Um, but there's actually no rush. I don't see any real way for my opponent to get counterplay. So I'll even play a move like h4 here just to scare my opponent. It doesn't really do anything, to be honest, but just to, just to scare him just a little bit. In fact, I probably should have taken on c6 there, but uh, I, like, I like this move. It can't be too bad. My opponent now... He's running into some danger, I feel. I have this move b5, which I think wins immediately, but knight takes c6 is so tempting, though. It's not as good, but it's very tempting. But I'll play the move b5 just because I'm feeling a bit, a bit underconfident. Yeah, b5 is sort of an annoying move. If he takes it, the knight takes b5, and that rook is trapped. You can see he's kind of just got squashed. It's a Bit of a, uh, bit of an unpleasant way to go. That can happen, particularly in these symmetrical Londons, so d4 openings with bishop f5, bishop f4, where one side can get in this move c5, or for black it would be the move c4. The queens come off, and then you just control the board and squeeze and squeeze. So that's what I have been trying to do here. You can see I'm just uh, continually squeezing away. Move c6 would continue the squeeze, but I think I will just take that off. And bishop b7, and continue to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. I think he might resign at this point. No, he's going to power on, but now the c-pawn will roll down the board, and that will be... It. I think this will be the resignation now. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, a bit of a shame. I do feel a bit sorry for you there, Micah, because it's not a nice way to go. We've all had it. We've all had it. Oh, Nezmetanov. Oh, oh, here we go. And Nezmetanov and I, we have had some games. We have had some games. Usually they involve... Nesmetanov appearing on time. Where are you? Maybe I can give him a bit more time if he'll actually show up. There you go. There we go. Give him a few more seconds. We'll get this happening. Yeah, so we're going to have a almost certainly a reversed Latvian because we always do. Here we go, F3. You're probably thinking, what, F3? But he's got a plan, this guy. <laughs> he's got a plan. So here we go. Nezmetinov, he loves this opening. He loves the Latvian Gambit. And annoyingly enough, he actually plays it reasonably well. And annoyingly enough for me, because I always find myself getting into some sort of trouble against him. He just knows this so well. He keeps trying to convince me to play it myself in tournament games against other grandmasters. I mean, even Nakamura would only dare play it in Blitz. So it's hard to... <laughs> I mean, you know what he's played in his in his game, so it's hard to uh, justify this. Oh, what am I going to do now? I'm kind of tempted to sack, but I will try to refrain and play Knight C6. You know, the position after three moves against Nesmetanov is always interesting, which I really admire. 
It's a great sort of chess. I wish more strong players played like that. That's a wish that I have from afar, but I'm not willing to push it forward myself by trying out the Latvian just yet. Actually, thanks to playing, actually, because of my games against Desbetsenov, so thanks to this sort of band of blitz over time and his constant uh, writing to me that I should take up the Latvian, I actually investigated it, legitimately investigated it to see whether or not it had any legs because I kept getting such bad positions against him. So I looked it up. It's a terrible opening. <laughs> it's just terrible. I mean, you have to know a tiny little bit of theory, but it just... Uh, I couldn't justify it. I, I couldn't justify it. But it leads to fun chess. And I, I particularly like the attitude that the Latvian conveys. All right. It's a lot of me talking. Not enough of me playing. Because now, once again, once again, Nezmetsnov's got a perfectly respectable position. Perfectly respectable. Nothing wrong with it. Again. I don't know how he does it over and over again. Anyway. Um, I will continue to play ambitiously. It seems only fair. So I'll put the knight out. See what comes back. That bishop on f1 is the big problem. If white had castled kingside already, he'd be doing very well. But that's the issue. So we'll see how he deals with that. I expect the move d4 here. Can't see any real alternative actually to d4, so I don't know what he's thinking about. It's really the only move that makes sense to me. Huh. Well, what do I know? It's very odd. I really thought he didn't have a choice but playing d4 there because of this move, bishop c5. The only thing I can think of is that he's actually intending to play h3, which is hard to believe, but otherwise it doesn't make sense. So I guess he's going to do h3. I really cannot predict his moves. It's not the first time. This happens quite a lot when we play. All right. Did not expect that. That's okay. And now I will play d4. I expect that he will play h3 now, finally. But I haven't guessed any of his other moves, so why should I think I can guess this one? Oh, there's h3, just when I'm saying that. Now, this was my trick, was to play the move bishop e3, because it looked like I was in a bit of trouble, but this was the idea. So if he takes on g4, I take on f4, and I'm reasonably happy with that. So I expect to move bishop to g3. He's really running himself short on time here. He's going to have to fix that up. No, I guessed wrong again. Of course I did. Not to worry. He's got to find somewhere for that king. He's really running low on time. Come on, man. Down to 10 seconds. Jeez. He hasn't lost any material. The position's still very playable. Six seconds. Oh, eight seconds. My God. Okay. So, queen to g5. Knight better play knight d2 very quickly here. There we go. He's super low on time. Um... I will. I'll just castle. He's just got so little time. I feel a bit sorry for my opponent here. Oh, he ran out of time. Oh, that's a shame. It's quite an interesting position. I think he can probably take on d4 here and certainly play on, but black has enormous compensation. But an interesting game. Just a teensy bit slow today was there Smetsanov, but we've got another Latvian, and once again, we've got an interesting position. Surprise, surprise. So in the spirit of that game and of the attitude and the bravery that Smetsanov continues to show every time we play, I'm going to whip us into King's Gambit. Get my own move, F4, in. 
which I've tried to do here. Against uh, Flossy. Interesting name. Uh, now, now I have, believe it or not, against a Grandmaster on ICC, played the move seven castles kingside. And after queen b6 check, I lost a piece on move seven with white. It has happened to me. I freely admit it. I hope that it never happens to me again. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out because if I'm not mistaken, I have an extra pawn which is um, it's pretty cool. Is that right? I haven't miscounted, right? I've got an extra pawn. I think it's an extra pawn. <laughs> Unfortunately, as Nesbetanov actually pointed out to me, I haven't sacrificed my queen at all today. And typically speaking, as most of you will know, I do try to sacrifice my queen at least once per banter blitz. So I've got to work hard to find a way to make this happen now. If I haven't miscounted, I have an extra pawn. So, got a good center. That's a fine move by my opponent. To be fair, that's a fine move. Um, oh, that's actually super annoying to deal with. just when I was feeling confident. I didn't see that one coming. Kind of, I think I might sack the exchange because I'm not sure what else to do here. Maybe H3. Yeah, this is, uh, this is not great. It's just going to be the exchange, I think. <laughs> Ah, dear, oh dear. I really messed this up. That's my time situation. Not great. How did I... How did I... How did this happen? Put that bishop on g3. There we go. Just lost the exchange for nothing. Good thing I had that extra pawn. Yeah, this is not so good. I wanted to sack my queen. I didn't want to lose the exchange. At least when I sack, I usually do it on my own terms. <laughs> now I have issues. Now I have issues. Surprisingly, I guess fortuitously, my position is actually not that bad. I have some decent pieces. That queen is a bit loose up there. That's a bit of a strange move. If I can get away with c4, I will. As I was saying, my pieces are actually decently placed. Um, so being the exchange down, I have compensation. I'd probably say if you put this on the computer, it would be sort of 0.3... Point four of an advantage to black would be my guess. Maybe 0.5, I don't know, but not not huge. Uh, ooh, what are you doing now? Why are you putting that piece there? I don't know what you're doing anymore. I can play 95. And now what are you going to do? Maybe you're going to play queen g5, but then I'm going to play bishop f4. Your queen is starting to look a little bit unhappy. I'm sort of, sort of doing all right now. Can I, can I just keep this up? Maybe I can just keep going. That queen is really, uh. She's really overextended herself. I managed to just pick up a piece. That was lucky. Lucky? Yeah. Let's be honest. It was pretty lucky. And now I should be able to pick up... Oh, my God. I can keep going. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> that queen. How many moves now has it been since move 15? It's been 
So that's seven moves in a row with the queen? Or maybe five, I don't know. I can't count. But it looks to me, unless I'm very much mistaken, that things are starting to turn in my favor. <laughs> Got very, very lucky there, but uh, I'll take it for sure. <laughs> because now I've managed to pick up not just one, but two pieces back after previously dropping the exchange. So this is definitely good news from my perspective. And I can use those to block up all the files for the rooks. Now I am cruising through, so my bravery if you want to call it that for playing the king's gambit looks like it's being rewarded king over oh dear cannot help myself now i'm gonna have to play have to play rook h1 and oh that's one pretty checkmate I may be feeling a little under the weather, but I can spot made in ones. Oh, I can spot made in ones. Usually. Yeah, bad luck, Flossy. Thanks for the game. All right, Grillmaster. Grillmaster just seems like a name that should have some number after it, like Grillmaster 2000 or Grillmaster 9000 or Grillmaster, I don't know what, 1 million? Hard to say. Feels like it deserves a number. Let's see what we get now. Ah, I'm going to have these boring, 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 boring. Boring King's Indian type. Boring thingy borings. No, this is not what I want. This is not what I want. This is not what I want. No, I don't like these positions. I don't find them particularly interesting. Uh, nothing wrong with them, of course. My opponent's perfectly within his rights to play like this. I just, just, they just don't do it for me. I just don't find them particularly interesting. Got the symmetrical bishops. I don't like that. I love fianchetto positions where one side fianchettos. If they fianchetto and I have them, I know what I'm doing. You play a modern defense against me, I'm ready for you. Um, or if I fianchetto and you don't, we play like a dragon or a whatever, classical King's Indian. I'm ready for you. I love that stuff. But the mutual fianchettoing, ugh. I don't know why, but it just, just don't like it. Just don't like it. However, this time around, things have opened up pretty quickly. And I've, whoa, what's happened here? Grillmaster playing a bit too quickly. A little bit too quickly has Grillmaster. He's just... Popped a piece and made me pretty happy in the process. <laughs> I'm feeling good about this. Good must have just moving a bit too fast, I think. And now, yeah, it's looking looking dubious now. Very tempted to play, and I will play knight g4 and. Grab that queenie. Thank you. Get ready for F5. Next move. Here we go. F5 coming up at you. Oh, yeah. What? Mm, let's see. Where's the checkmate? I'm supposed to be able to spot mate in ones here. I don't know what it's going to be mate in. Queen f5. Let's drive him back first. Where's the mate? Where's the mate? Actually can't see the checkmate. Which is a bit annoying. A bit embarrassing. After I spoke about my ability to see mates. Where is it? Where's the mate?
Mm. I wonder where it was. Still can't see it. Anyway. What are you thinking about now, Grillmaster? What's going on? Grillmaster. I think it's probably time to resign. What's happened? Nice, he says. Okay. Thank you. Um... Oh, there we go. Resignation. So I'm on 100%. I'm not feeling 100%, but I'm on 100%, which is good. We've had a couple of exciting games, which is nice. Samurai. Where are you from? What a cool flag. Seychelles. Yeah, Seychelles Island. Seychelles. All right, E5. What are we going to do here? It's such a cool flag. I've never seen it before. Um, all right, cool flag deserves a cool opening. Let's have a dragon. Let's have a dragon. Yeah, love the dragon. <laughs> I was just saying, one side fiend shadows, the other one doesn't. That's my cup of tea. Let's have that. Let's have that. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. You're not supposed to play queen d2 there. You're not. You're not. You're supposed to play f3 first. Which means I was supposed to play knight g4, I guess. But I didn't. So now we're back in... <laughs> just back in normal stuff again. I think I could have taken advantage of that early queen d2. Oh, no, no, no. There, You can't play g4 there. Ah, oh, Samurai, forgot your theory. This is... I was just talking about this a few games ago. Grandmasters, we get all these extra points without doing any work. You know, it's a, the whole thing is just one big scam, basically. It's a big con. This is a trick that I think I was first taught when I was, whatever, 11, 12. And Samurai obviously hasn't been taught it. Therefore, I, get, I pick up a point that's sort of been, you know, 20 years of marination, basically, until this point. <laughs> Doesn't seem fair, does it? Now, you've got to play bishop b3 immediately after rook c8 to stop this trick. And then the line goes knight e5, g4, knight c4, bishop takes, rook takes. We basically end up in the same position except that white still has an extra piece. Very unlucky. I feel very bad for Samurai. Samurai, if you're listening, why don't you jump back in the queue? We'll have another one. We'll try to compensate for that one because, I, like I said, I feel bad. Not too bad. I'll take the point. Don't get me wrong. But jump back in your queue. Let's have another one. All right. 11. Ah, oh, 11. I like 11. I like 11's handle. I like 11's play. I like 11's banter. So it's always, always good fun. Uh, always good fun when he shows up. Where is he? Come on, 11. I don't know. It's going to give you more time, but you are pretty much pretty much got there. You want a perk? We can have a perk if you want. Where's he gone? I'll give you 15 more seconds while we're here. Okay. <laughs> now you got more time than me. Well, that doesn't seem fair. So we've got a modern defense. I'm going to play the most aggressive line against it. It's called the 150 attack. Never really sure why it's called the 150 attack. It's got something to do with England. I think that the English, they've got this sort of special rating system, their own rating system called British Chess Federation Ratings. And if I'm not mistaken, and I may well be, but if I'm not mistaken, um, 150 is sort of talking around like uh, 1800, 1900 type ELO. And I think that the idea is that the 150 attack was played by people trying to pick up in those sort of competitions, pick up the quick rating points, that sort of stuff. They used to play this line all the time. I think that's right. Could be wrong. Could have just made the whole thing up. Who knows? Um, but I think that's where the idea came from, that you were just basically... Um, <laughs> 
puts bishop on e3, queen on d2, castle queen side, throw all your pieces at the king side, which has been similar to the approach I've taken in all the openings today, basically. Just play this one-dimensional type chess, get one strategy and, and run with it, which is what I'm doing here. Um, it's uh, Typically speaking, you do play um, g4 or bishop h6 before playing h4, because if you play the quick h4, then black can play h5, and then it's a bit tricky to get the move g4 in without a sacrifice, um, which actually leads some players with black to play h5 in first before white has pushed any of the pawns on the king side, just to stop that idea. Um, but here I've got sort of been given the whole cake and cherry together with g4, bishop h6, and h4, um, so far I haven't done any thinking in this game it's just been the standard 150 attack put the pieces there, push the pawn, see what happens I mean, again, it's sort of this way that grandmasters take advantage of these situations, just push and see what happens so I'm feeling pretty confident at this point although I have to be careful if I play h5 then bishop takes h6, queen takes and g5 would be Somewhat annoying. I think what I'll do is first I'll just play this. Sorry for my nose. Just play this little a3 move. Send that knight back. Although, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't really know what Ears was intending to do with that knight anyway. It's a bit of a strange place for it. Now, I assume that he wants to get the move g5 in somehow. And I should try my best to stop it. Um, yeah, yeah, this g5 move is kind of, it's a bit annoying, it's not quite clear how I can deal with it, I'll play, I'll put the knight on h3, stop any g5 ideas for now, tiny trap here if you played queen takes h4, but he didn't fall for it, and now I'll take on yeah, now I'll take on g7. It's probably the right time. See what he takes back with. He'll probably take with the knight, but I think the king is better. It sounds strange to say that, but that's my prediction. I think the king is better. Maybe he'll do it. He's waiting until I tell him the answer on the on the live stream. Clever. Yeah, it's a big decision. The problem with knight takes is that I think after queen h6, it's pretty much time to resign. So that's why I think it has to be king takes, and he's done that. Now it's the right move, king takes. Yep. So now h5, notice that I've done it at a situation where black can't play g5. That's quite important. Because of that, he might consider a move like the little h6 here. <laughs> I think 11 did actually legitimately listen until he heard the delayed stream telling him <laughs> to take with the king. That's clever. Uh, but he's running really low on time, though. I'm not sure the wait was worth it. He's under 20 seconds. He's got to move now. f6, yeah, good move. Good move. Did you get that from the live stream as well? You sneaky little guy. Now that's the right move there. Now he wants to play g5, so I'm not going to let that happen. So I will uh, do a little swap. Now if I can get the queen across, it must be almost over. My knight is just in a bit of a stupid square at this particular moment. I'll actually do something a bit strange here. I'll bring it back to g1. The reason it's going back to g1 is so that the queen can come across to h2 afterwards. So I want to bring the queen across. I have to say, um, 11's really played this quite well uh, up to here. So well done to you for that. It's done very well. I will, I'll get rid of the thing on h6. And I'll try to bring this knight back into the game. 
is, is the time situation is kind of brutal. It's hard to believe that he's going to be able to hold on now, but we'll see. Never know. Uh, I think he's just made a boo-boo there because he's going to fall for main three. Yeah, close, but uh, just a little mistake. No time for bishop b7 there. Had to immediately play something like, I don't know, king g7 or something like that. It was a good game, though, actually. I quite enjoyed that one. I'll even write back. That was a fun game. I have to say, played that quite well, although still, so far today, I've been able to, by and large, follow this one-dimensional type play, and that's worked pretty well. So I'll play the French. Obviously, strategically a bit more complicated. And I'll play... Well, he's going to play the Tarash variation. So I'll play the mainline Tarash. We'll end up with something... <laughs> Never seen that move before in my life. What is that? What is that? I've never seen it before, ever. I'm completely baffled by that move. I've never seen that move before. I have no idea what's going on now. My opponent obviously does, but I'm completely lost. Lost in terms of what's going on. I doubt very much that I'm lost in terms of the position. Although... Although, to be fair, my position is a bit weird now. If he gets that pawn back on d4, I won't be super happy. But I'm not sure I can actually stop that. So maybe... I've never seen this opening before. Ever. Ever. Uh, I have no idea what to do. No idea. Bishop f5. No idea. I have an extra pawn. But... I don't feel very good about that because I don't see what to do. What is this? What is this business? Now I am actually worse. And my opponent has used zero time. How can he move so quickly? Where's he from? Iceland. He's from Iceland. I mean, he's doing basically what I said that I like doing, which is go on autopilot. He's got a system that he knows well. He's gone on autopilot, and he's done a great job of it. I'm really concerned here for my future. He's moving just so fast. We're ending up in this... We're ending up in some sort of endgame here that I, I, I'm i struggling to see how I can play this position. This is really, uh, really quite unpleasant. This is horrible. Just horrible. All my pieces are in stupid positions. Um, I'm way down on time. I'm actually just giving up that pawn on a7 because I honestly can't find find a way around this. This is just uh, appalling. Just appalling. I'll put the knight on b5. Hope that helps a little bit. Jesus. Jesus. What am I doing here? Uh, down to under a minute. Honestly, have no idea how to handle this. I thought I could get away here with bishop d4, but that'll just leave me a pawn behind, so that's not going to cut it. Unbelievable. I'm just lost. How can I be lost so quickly? How is it possible that I'm lost so quickly? 
I have to give up that pawn on g7 for nothing. He hasn't taken it though, which is good news for me. 40 seconds left, and I hate my position. I think he could have probably just taken that pawn off. Whoa, in he comes. No time left. Just trying to hold on here. Ah, that's a good move. He's found another good move. He's found a lot of good moves, actually. He's playing extremely well. <laughs> Oops. Not super sure he should have done that, though. Might have given me a chance that I'm not sure that I deserved. Wow. That's a turnaround. Did not expect to see that happening. Um, probably I can even take that pawn off. What have I got? 38 seconds. Oops. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. That was dumb. That was really dumb. I was just a piece up. But I guess my opponent's strategy of just trying to um, freak me out, I guess, has worked pretty well because now I'm yeah now I've got some issues gee this is an interesting game interesting opponent interesting game and I've got 27 seconds left this Icelandic guy is just kicking my butt but 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 he's let me he's let me stay alive Yeah, he's let me stay alive, so still in this. Oh, but I got no time. I got no time. And bring that bishop back. Oops, shouldn't have allowed rook b7 check. Damn it. Might have to try and play this for the draw, actually, without any time left. It's a bit cowardly, but. <laughs> oh, no, he wants the win. He wants the win. He wants the win. And why not? He's better. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I've got no time left at all. Ah, 23 seconds. He wants the win. Impressive. Okay, so here we go. Uh, da, 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 no time, no time, no time. No time. Trying my best to hold on here. I don't know if I can keep this up, though. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Yes. Oh. Oh, my God. This guy just unbelievable. How do I offer a draw again? I always forget on this interface. What a game. Hoo-hoo. Taflmadur. Incredible. Was absolutely destroying me. Two minutes up on the clock. Blunders a piece. I give it back one move later. Good work, Dave. And then I have to just absolutely grit on with the skin of my teeth there to grab the draw. Um, that was intense. Whoa, what a great game. Jesus, I don't know who that Tafla Madur is, but I've never been to Iceland. I've always wanted to go. I hear they are hardy and intimidating people. Well, that was intimidating. That was fun. Oh, we're going to have this one again. We're going to have a reverse London system. I'm playing against Aliyev, 1978 from Canada. We've played before. We might actually get almost exactly the same position we've had before. I've showed you this once before, this idea of queen b3, queen b6, and then playing c5, swapping off the queens and playing very quickly for b4, b5. Very standard plan. 
will see me try to put it in place here. My opponent's done exactly the same thing we had in the last game, exactly the same. And that works pretty well for me, so I'll try it again here. I'll play b5, see if we get the old knight h5 happening again. And it really did work pretty well. Oh, with h6, then I can play h3, so that's good. Keep that bishop. Otherwise, we've got just exactly the same position as before, pretty much. <laughs> He's thrown the knight in, which is fine, but... The action's not going to be on this side of the board. The action's going to be on the other side of the board. So, not sure I would have done that. But uh, what do I know? So now I'll play b4. He can have my knight on f3 if he if he wants it. But it's not really a big deal for me, I think. <laughs> Never look a gift Australian in the mouth, says he is. <laughs> classic um yeah i'll drop that bishop back now how far back should it go maybe just the g3 here keep the option of that h file opening up he's gone h5 here i really don't know if my opponent's doing this the best way because now i've got this move here and bishop a6 threatening bishop b7. That's quite an annoying move to face. He's gone. He's really doesn't seem to care about what I'm up to. But now, I mean, again, it's just this one dimensional play here, playing on the queen side. Well, as soon as the move c5, queen takes b3, a takes b3, as soon as that happens, I can just play my way and. Nothing too bad should happen to me anymore. I don't, I can't see anything bad happening to me. Give me a few pawns, I'll take them. Now what? Hard to believe that something like rook takes b4 works, but might be his best try. Like I said, hard to believe. Maybe it's the best move. Rook takes b4. Yeah, there we go. He's played it, actually. It's interesting. And there's the rook check. I kind of expected that one as well. And now I have to be a bit careful here. I have to be a bit careful. Um, maybe I have to be very careful. Maybe I wasn't careful and should have been careful. These are all possibilities now. I think I'll go to e3. Oh, it feels a bit risky. Maybe now to e2. <laughs> Probably he's going to go rook b2 check. There we go. And I'll run one more time, I think, to f1. <laughs> I'm very tempted to sack a rook here. In fact, I think I will. I will actually sack the rook. It's been a while since I've done a sack in this uh, banner blitz, so I'll do one here. And the point to this sack is fairly straightforward, which is that I can push this C pawn down the board. Almost gets mated by playing that move. But I think he's okay. So now I do c6 and c7 and I think I can't see a way to stop it actually. So he's decided that he can't stop it in fact. He's going to give up a bishop for it, which is fair enough. Probably wants to push that a pawn as soon as he can now. It's not so easy to do. Hmm, interesting, interesting. I wonder what I'll take with here. Probably the pawn, actually. And there's f4 now. And f5. I think I've got... I think my pawns are doing quite well now. 
pretty happy to give up that H pawn. I'm pretty sure my pawns will roll through. Here we go. Off you go now. Good pawns. Have fun. And what have we got now? Something cute maybe. F7. Should be enough. Should be enough. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. This is, I think this is the third time that we've had this particular variation today. Maybe I should be mixing it up more, to be honest. But it's kind of, uh, I want to say instructive, if you believe me that it's instructive, because it's very, very common to get this structure. You can see my opponents have uh, played very, very natural moves and just get squashed every time. And it's not because I'm a super amazing guy, very strong grandmaster, anything like that. It's just because I know these particular positions. I know the plan. There's one plan. And you just play it. You just play it. It doesn't matter what your rating is. Um, you might have to take a little bit of care when it comes to the tactics. Although, as you can see, I don't often take that care myself. <laughs> but um, seems to seems to work. So something to think about, anyway, in case you want to learn one of these uh, systems. All right, so Nez Metzenov is back, which is great. And we don't have a Latvian because I beat him to it. I beat him to it by throwing in a um, King's Gambit again. Problem is this guy, uh, this guy knows all these tricks. So here I've tried to, I always forget what I'm supposed to do here. I forget, is it, is it something, is something like, how does it go? Is it Knight C3? Is it Queen E2? I can't remember. Do I take the pawn maybe? Do I take the pawn? Maybe I take the pawn. Maybe I've messed this up. Is it queen e2 now? There's theory on this, but I've forgotten it. And I'm almost certain that what I've done is not right because this doesn't feel, this doesn't feel right at all. I feel that I've messed this up a bit. A lot. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's gone wrong somehow. It's gone wrong. Again. I don't know how I keep doing this. It's always against Nesmetsanov as well. Always. Every time. He's gone back. So this is... This is um, this is good news for me. I was much more worried about uh, bishop to f5 there. Actually, now feels like I'm feels like I'm coming back a bit. It's just very hard to get castled now. That's my problem. So I'm going to have to give back one pawn. Well, these things happen. My pieces just don't they just don't fit right at the moment. They're just not they're not that happy. Um, so many holes. That pawn on f4 is proving to be the bane of my existence. It was a great quote by a grandmaster. I can't remember who exactly, but he said, the problem with the Dutch defense, which is playing f5 for black after d4, the problem with the Dutch is that quite often the best move for black in the structures that follow is the move f5 to f7, moving the pawn back, which is, of course, illegal. And I feel that here, that I've got these stupid pawns on c4 and f4 that they look they look impressive, but they're really not. And they're kind of just getting in the way, to be honest. And I'm finding this to be a little bit troublesome. Ah. <sighs> 
Right, I'm going to play a very anti-positional move here. I'm going to play c5. The problem is because I have all these holes in my position, you know, massive hole on e4, uh, that whole diagonal basically from um, a7 to g1 and so forth, that I'm going to try and block things up just because I'm not quite ready for the position to open. I just, I'm not as prepared as my opponent for the opening, so I'm going to try just to keep it closed until I can regroup my forces, and then I'll think about opening it. So, and I know Nesmetanov, he prefers the open positions. So, hopefully, this has annoyed him a little bit. Now, if I'm very unlucky, I might actually be just losing a pawn here. That wouldn't be very nice, but it could be true. Um, I think... I think not, but you never know. I'll play ninety five. It would have been possible to hold on to that pawn by playing bishop to b5. Um, and then after a6, just taking the knight on d7. But um, I don't feel like I should give up the two bishops just yet. Um, although I keep talking about this like there's going to be a long-term end to this game. We've only got, we've both got less than a minute, so I can't imagine the game will last that much longer. My opponent, I mean, he lost on time in the previous game. He has definitely played a much better game this time much much better it's much closer than the first one that's definitely for sure um now that king's got to find somewhere to go there's only d8 it's the only option really so i shouldn't think about this too much <laughs> but he is all right now our castle so i've lost a pawn but on the other hand my opponent's got the king in the center so that's good news for me he might play a6 here. He's got to move quickly. He's running very low on time. Tempted now to play f5, and I will, but he's got to move. Got to move. Nazmetanov, you've got to move. He's got no time. 15 seconds. Come on. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Wow. Wow. -y. Does that work? Things are going to get complicated now. He doesn't have enough time to calculate this, I would wager. We'll see what happens. I'm going to move super quick to see if he can handle the time situation. I'm not sure why my last move was the best one, but I just wanted to see what he'll come up with. And he's lost on time. Oh, that's such a shame because I think if he takes on B5 here, Nesmetano, I think you might be winning. It's probably not what you want to hear right now, to be honest, but I think you might be winning. I just realized as I played knight takes c5 that I had messed it up. Whoa. Really snaked through there. Whew. Good game. Much better than our first game. That was classic. Thanks for the game. All right. Also, Rosso sounds Italian. Wait. Also, does that mean bear? I think that means bear in Italian. Rosso, is that pink? Or red? Not sure. Um, is it red bear? But isn't yeah, he's from France though? Is also Rosso? Is that French? Why is nobody talking back to me? <laughs> um, honestly, don't know. Also Rosso? Is it? Don't know. Don't know. All right, we've got a strange sort of Spanish. Here I am trying to work out whether it's Italian or French, but we've got a Spanish. Um, weird one because my opponent's played with the knight on c3. So there's nothing too exciting happening just yet. I've got a weird knight on e7. Don't really want that knight to be there, but it's there. Nothing much I can do about that now. Um, tempted to play knight g6. I never understand these positions, but it uh, can't be too bad what I've done. Knight g5 does seem a little bit loose to me. What are you going to do after h6? Maybe he's going to take on f7. That would be quite something. He has. Gee, he's taken on f7. That's massive. 
I don't see the follow-up though. I don't see the follow-up. He might have burnt his bridges a little bit there. Ugh. Actually, I played a bit of a silly move there. Because now Queen G4, check. I can't go back to E7, which was my idea. I have to go back to F7, but now he, can he play? No, maybe I'm still okay. He can play Knight D5, but it's not a big deal, I think. I think he will go Knight D5. There we go. Yeah, I can play this move, Queen E6, and he can actually, uh, he can actually swap queens now if he wants to. I don't know whether he will or not, but he can swap queens, take on c7. Yeah, he's going to do that, take on c7, and then he'll... Um, then he will take on a8. Which is, of course, completely fine, but... Uh, Ah, he has two pawns. For some reason, I thought he only had one pawn for the rook versus two pieces. But he has two pawns. Two pawns is something, actually. Two pawns is something. I didn't think that through. Um, so, well done, him. He's got to be careful now. He's got a few little holes. That probably need patching up. Probably has to play C3 here. And now... I think I'll play I'll play knight f3 and rook f8 <laughs> position is uh, reasonably unbalanced but the main thing in my favor here is just the time situation. I think my opponent's quite low on time. Um, so even after bishop e3, which seems like the good move here, I'll just drop the bishop back, keep the pieces on the board. It's going to be a little bit tricky for my opponent. My main issue is this stupid knight on g6. I really don't like that guy. I'm going to try and bring him back into the game somehow. <laughs> Probably via f8 like so and I will play a quick g5 as well just to make sure that knight doesn't get trapped but my opponent's position is pretty decent to be honest it's done pretty well I will feel a bit better once I get the move g4 in That's not very far away now. There's the move D4. It doesn't bother me too much, so I can get in the move G4. Good. All right, so that's good because that's sort of stage one of the plan, and that frees up my rook on F7. That's great. I can try and find somewhere for that rook to go. Opponent really running a bit low on time. Although he has managed to open things up a bit. So that's something. <laughs> but the time situation is just brutal now. It's only got 19 seconds. I don't think he's going to be able to survive with that much time left, I'm afraid. Can't see that happening. Uh, tempted to play the move b5 here. I think I will actually play b5. I want that diagonal for my bishop one way or the other. Um, I think I will play bishop b8. I'm going to bring it to a7 eventually. Maybe not immediately though. Oh, rook d5... And now I'm not so, yeah, now I've got 95. I don't know. Probably he missed that move. He's, he has to drop back now. And gives me a pawn. 
four, three, two, one. Ooh, hoo, hoo. one second left. Impressive. But after Bishop A7, I can't see. He's going to lose on time. Yeah, that's tough. Really fought super hard there. That was a close one. All right, Ears tells me that's also Rosso is indeed red beer. Ears is there to correct my French whenever I get it wrong, which is quite often. Used to be another guy, old time. I used to also correct my French. I don't speak French, so correct implies that I had it to begin with. Um which has never been the case. All right, so Micah on board. Now, what have I... I've played... I've played... lots of things. I'll play another Knight of Six. I don't know which opening we'll have now. Maybe let's have one with C5 in. We haven't had one of those yet. And I'll put the Bishop on B7. Oh, he's playing the London now, Micah. Or he, actually, I'm not sure. It could be a she, Micah. Playing the London, which I find super annoying. But uh, and I've been playing it for most of today uh, from the white side, so he will see it from the black side. I'm going to go hunting that bishop, and I'll get that bishop off, which will help things a bit. This is, by the way, the last game for today. I have not managed to maintain a 100% record because I had that incredible draw against that guy from Iceland with an unpronounceable name, at least to me. Taf tar, taflu, taflura? Can anyone remember? I can't remember what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a that was an absolute corker of a game. Fantastic, really enjoyed that one. Um, although it did spoil my 100% record. This Mike is now putting in a great showing that might also spoil my 100% record because the position is a little bit more comfortable for White. This being the last game, I've at least managed to remain undefeated but to be honest I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to keep that up here <laughs> I've got the two bishops but my king's got nowhere to go so I'm pretty much committed at this point that I'm going to have to try and attack because king's going to have nowhere safe it can never go king side <laughs> and the reason Oh, that's a good move as well. The reason it can't go kingside is because there's always going to be this um, battery along the B1 to uh, H7 diagonal. So I'll get made it on H7. So the fact that I've just given up the right to castle doesn't bother me too much because queenside was too exposed. Kingside, I had two weak dark squares. So actually, I, I had planned not to castle at all, and that's been confirmed now um, we're probably going to go into an end game very soon would be my guess which is not what I'd planned for the last game of the day I always try to get a nice aggressive one but I can't see a way I can't see a way around it now I have this move a6 which is just a tiny bit annoying for Micah a tiny bit annoying it's, it's I'm just trying to cause little problems um, that bishop doesn't have any great square to go to so that's something <laughs> Nesmetinov says that I still haven't done a queen sack that's true um, but if my opponent swaps queens here, I'm afraid I'm probably going to have to take it back because it's the only legal move <laughs> in the position. So uh, I wanted a queen sack. I really did. But, you, I mean, you got to forgive me. I really didn't have many opportunities today. Um, you never know. You never know. Mike is down to 30 seconds. It could happen. He's uh, He or she, I, I, I don't, again, I don't know the German names that well. At least not this one. I think the move is... Oh, queen d6. Well, Nesmetinov, I'm afraid I cannot uh, sack my queen in this game. I cannot. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid I'm going to have to take that guy. Oh, I did want to sack my queen, but I can't do it. 
Um, I did actually see this variation and I thought that it was a little bit dubious for my opponent because I thought that knight on b7 would, was in danger of getting trapped. But now that the positions actually appeared on the board, I realized that it's actually not a big deal for my opponent. So the knight's not getting trapped at all. Um, and actually, I'm the one, if anyone has to be a bit careful, it's me because that knight is going to be quite a force once it gets to um, d6. So uh, this position is not simple at all. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, okay. So... Tricky now, tricky position. I'm not that happy with it. Knight d6 is going to follow. I am not at all happy with this. This is going to be super difficult to win. I think I'm actually a bit worse here. Tough one to finish. I'm sorry, Nesmetanov and all others who wanted a uh, queen sack. This is the last... This is the last. Okay, so here we are. Rook ending. I don't want this to go to... Oh, dear. I've got to try to make this interesting. My opponent's only got 30 seconds. I've got to try and make it interesting here. So one way I'm going to do that is I'm going to offer a way for us to break up this pawn structure. Here we go. All right, so pawn structure is no longer symmetric. Thank God for that. Oh, Micah, 15 seconds. This is going to be tough. This is getting interesting now. Ooh, possibly risky. Possibly a bit risky. I don't know. We'll find out. Nine seconds. Jeez, running low on time now. And there we go. Rook g3. All right, so I've managed to crack through. King f2 was mandatory in that position. Was probably still a draw. Poor Micah has not found it. And now I can start to motor. Rook takes g2. Rook takes b2. My opponent can pick up some pawns, but my pawns are bigger than your pawns. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Poor Micah. Two. Whoa. Ooh, sneaks in a check. Sneaks in another check, no doubt, to try and save time. Ooh. Really running low on time now. I'll take that extra pawn. Three, two, one. Ooh. <laughs> 0.7 of a second. Well, I got staying alive. Desperately staying alive here. And I'll send the king in, see if Micah can make another move. Two, one. Oh, point six of a second. Oh, my God. I can't handle the pressure. Here comes the rook check. And rook g1. That'll be, I think she'll lose on time here. We'll run that clock down. Yep, yeah. Oh, found a move, but it falls from 8 and 1. Oh, Whew, what a finish. Gee, you had me on edge there. You were the one in time troll. But uh, Dunk is there. Medeza Spiel, it was a great game. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Today, the one Icelandic representative pulling off a draw, almost a win. Uh, quite good fun. I, I haven't felt like I've managed to deliver on the sacrifices that I normally do, particularly the queen sacrifice, but it has been a post-doctor's visit band of blitz. I think you got what you expected. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. Appreciate it. Next time around, I'll be up and vaccinated, prepared, possibly back from Africa, some stories to tell you, and some banner to be had. So I've been your host today, David Smurden from Australia. I'll see you next time.